everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today I'm going to be testing a new paper. This is the Hannah Mule Harmony paper. It's a hot press paper that has a natural white colour and it's 300 GSM in weight. My first thought is that it actually looks and feels quite similar to the Arches watercolour paper, but we'll get started on it and see how it goes. So before I go in with the coloured pencil, I'm just gently rubbing out those pencil marks on the eye so that it doesn't show through. And to begin, I'm going to take the Polychromos Payne's Grey to map out the details of the eye. Making sure I have a sharpish pencil for this and using a light to medium pressure. I like to use a lighter version of the reference photo to start so that I can see all those details within the eye. And I chose to use the Payne's Grey pencil as I can see that it's more of a cooler dark grey. I tend to use a polychromos to outline around the eye rather than a softer pencil like the luminance so that I can get a sharper line. I'll still use this pencil to gently shade in those shadowed areas like I'm doing here but I also like to use it to get those sharper outlines of the eye mapped out. So as I'm shading in I'm kind of working in between those eyelashes coming down from the top of the eye. My first thought while working on this paper is that it feels really soft and smooth and is picking up the pigment well. Once I've got the outline mapped out, I'm then working into the darker details within the eye, mapping out those darkest areas in the pupil. Then I'm going back over the outlines of the eye, refining any details. Then taking the Polychromos Cold Grey 232, I'm shading into those lighter areas in the pupil using a lighter pressure. using a bit of a heavier pressure as I shade into the darker side on the right. Then here I'm just shading into the shadowed area of the iris before going in with a warmer pencil. And here I'm just lightly mapping out the shadows of the eyelashes in the reflection and then shading in that darker spot in the reflection. And whilst I'm here I'm also shading around the eye, keeping a lighter pressure.
As I'm working around the eye, I'm making sure to change the angle of my pencil to follow the direction of the fur. And then for the base of the iris, I'm using the Polychromos Ivory, which is a light creamy yellow colour, and I'm shading in using a light to medium pressure. This is my usual go-to pencil to use as a base for warmer eyes, as well as cool toned eyes. And then taking the Polychromos Terracotta, which is a burnt orange colour, I'm shading around the edges of the iris, using a light to medium pressure, taking the pressure off as I shade into the centre. I'm really liking how the pencils are layering on the paper so far, but we'll see how it goes as we add more layers. It's hard to tell at this stage how many layers of pencil the paper will take, but I'm hoping I'll be able to add many more to create that realistic glassy look in the eye. Next I'm taking the Pablo Chestnut Pencil, which is a warm ready brown shade, and I'm first outlining around the edge of the eye, and then lightly shading into the iris, taking the pressure off again as I go into the centre. If you don't own this pencil, you could always use the Polychromos Burnt Sienna, which is quite similar. I think because the paper isn't quite as toothy as the Fabriano, I'm struggling to build an even layer of pencil. I feel like it's kind of picking up pigment in random places and it isn't quite as much of a gradual build up of colour like on the Fabriano. The paper overall feels a little bit too smooth and the pencil almost slides over it rather than getting into the tooth of it. But we'll see how it goes the more layers we add. Next up I'm taking the olive brown 10% as I can see some slight hints of yellow green in the eye and I'm using more of a medium pressure here to work into those areas, blending those layers we already have down in the iris. Then going back in with the Payne's Grey pencil, I'm going over those darker areas in the pupil, using more of a medium to heavy pressure. taking the pressure off a little as I shade to the left. As I'm shading in this lower part, I'm making sure to keep those lighter areas of the reflection free. Again taking the pressure off as I work into the left side of the pupil. And then using the same pencil, I'm just lightly shading over that lighter area in the centre of the pupil.
and then I'm also working back into the edges of the eye. using a much heavier pressure to go over the waterline at the bottom here. Really building up the shadow in the corner on the left side here. using a heavier pressure to block in that shadow around the edge. Next, I just want to get the blue in the reflection in, so I'm using the Luminance Light Cobalt Blue and I'm lightly shading into the reflections at the top. And then I'm adding to the reflection at the bottom here. And also shading into the inner corner and right around the eye again, following the direction of the fur as I shade in. Going back to the iris, I'm taking the Luminance Brown Ochre and I'm shading in around the edge using a medium to heavy pressure, gradually bringing my pencil into the centre and covering the majority of the iris. And I think this is where I wasn't enjoying the paper quite as much because it just felt a bit too smooth. Even though I don't usually add any precise details at this stage, I like to build the layers up in a way that builds texture and I just find that the pigment lays down too smooth. Now here I'm using a bit of a deeper pencil, this is the Luminance Burnt Sienna and I'm shading around the edges of the iris, working into the darkest areas, using circular motions as I do this to try and create that look of the random veins in the eye. I really want to darken the outline of the eye 
so I'm using the Polychromos Black to go over the outline, using a medium to heavy pressure. As I'm going back over the top of the eye, I'm shading over those lighter areas I made for the eyelashes, as I decided I'll just add them back in over the top with the slice tool later on. And then I'm going over the darkest areas of the pupil. To continue shading in the pupil, I decide to go in with the Polychromos Dark Indigo, as I can see a hint of deeper blue in there, and I'm shading in using a medium to heavy pressure. Lightly going over the reflection in the centre. And then here I'm lightly shading in this reflection at the bottom. Then I'm going over the outlines of the eye. Going back in with the black pencil, I'm going over the very darkest parts of the pupil. Lightly shading over the reflection here. And then for the blue in the reflection at the top, I'm using the cobalt blue greenish to shade in. And then I'm taking the polychromo sky blue to shade over the whole of the reflection using a medium pressure. Also shading into this reflection at the bottom and adding a slight touch of colour in the centre here. Now I really want to deepen the ready tones around the edge of the eye. So I'm taking the Derwent Lightfast Mars Black, which is a very pigmented deep ready purple kind of colour. Perfect for really deepening those warmer areas in the eye. So I'm working around the edges of the eye and pupil using a light to medium pressure, as you don't have to press on very hard with this pencil.
and then I'm using the olive brown 50% which is the darker shade of the 10% we used earlier and I'm just working around the pupil using a medium to heavy pressure and circular motions. This is also blending those layers of pencil down nicely. Going back in with the Payne's Grey pencil, I'm going over the darker areas and just refining any details around the eye, using a medium to heavy pressure. And here I'm lightly going over this reflection at the bottom. I know this is making it look a little darker than it is on the reference photo, but I like to do this so then I can go in with a lighter pencil to bring out the reflection at the end. So now that we've added in those layers, I'm going over the top with the White Museum Acruel, which is usually the pencil I tend to use to bring out the lighter details in the eye. And I'm just going over those lighter reflections in the pupil, working into the patterns I can see here. Then I'm shading over the whole of the reflection at the bottom here, as it's more of a solid colour. And then I'm shading over the reflection at the top to blend those layers down and brighten it slightly. Going back in with the Pablo Chestnut, I'm just adding in some reddy brown details into the eye. I think this is where I could start to feel that I'd reached my limit with the layers and I was struggling to add more detail over the top. And then I'm going in with a darker reddy brown, just attempting to add in any last bits of detail to the iris. Now to really darken the edges of the eye, I'm taking the Derwent Drawing Ivory Black, which is my most pigmented black pencil, and I'm just going over the very darkest parts of the eye. Adding a touch of colour into the darkest parts of the pupil here. And then going back in with the Payne's Grey pencil and refining any areas in the pupil and eye. And 
The eye is looking like it's almost complete, so I'm going to start working on the fur around the eye. So I'm taking the Payne's Grey 30%, as the area right around the eye is like a bluish grey colour. And I'm shading in following the direction of the fur, using a light to medium pressure. Then going back to the eye for a moment, I'm using the dark indigo pencil just to deepen the very top part of the reflection here. And I'm taking the pressure off as I shade down. Then I'm just working back into areas of the pupil. Going in with the Payne's Grey 60%, I'm continuing to work into the area right around the eye, creating shorter strokes following the direction of the fur, and keeping a light to medium pressure at this stage.
Then going in with the Polychromo Sky Blue, I'm just working into the area right around the eye to bring out that lighter blue colour using a light to medium pressure. Now we've got the base layer down around the eye, I'm taking the Payne's Grey pencil to start adding in darker strokes around the eye, using a medium to heavy pressure. And here I'm just shading away from the eye, taking the pressure off as I do this. As I'm shading in, I'm making sure not to go over the lighter area right around the eye. And then here I'm just adding some darker details around the edge of the eye. Lightly going over this corner in the edge of the eye where there's a slight shadow in the reflection. And then I'm pressing on a little harder around the very edges. Adding in some details coming out from the pupil here. Using the Polychromos Dark Indigo Pencil, I'm bringing out that deeper blue colour around the eye, repeating the same steps as before, creating strokes around the eye in the direction of the fur. Taking the pressure off to shade over the lighter area around the eye. Now that we've got a few layers down around the eye, I want to add in those eyelashes coming down from the top of the eye. So I'm using the slice tool to add these in, etching in those lines bringing the tool down over the reflection. The slice tool will only work once you have enough layers down, and the more layers you have down the better the result. So here it's not coming up quite as light, but it's fine as I can go over it with a white pencil. So here I'm going in with the white museum aquarel to go over those strokes we just etched in. I like to do this just to brighten and define the strokes and I'm making sure I have an extra sharp pencil for this. And then whilst I'm here, I'm also working back into the reflections, 
smoothing out any of the layers here. Now taking the Payne's Grey pencil, making sure my pencil is sharp, I'm adding in the shadows of the lashes at the top of the reflection. And then I'm continuing to refine any details within the eye. And then I'm working back into the darker area around the eye. Now I just want to bring out more of that blue around the eye, so I'm taking the Polychromos Prussian Blue and I'm using a light to medium pressure to shade in around the eye. Focusing mainly around the outer part here, as it's slightly more vibrant as it comes out into the warmer fur. Taking the pressure off as I add a light layer into this lighter area right around the eye. Then again I'm adding a touch of colour to the top of the reflection. Taking the Payne's Grey 60% pencil and working back into the area around the eye, filling in those lighter areas. using a lighter pressure to shade over the lighter part under the eye. Then I'm using the ultramarine blue to shade just under the eye here. Going back in with the Polychromos Black, I'm darkening the details around the eye and in the reflection. B 
being careful to work in between those lighter hairs. Now I feel like I'm ready to work on the warmer part of the fur, so I'm lightly rubbing out the pencil marks ready to go in with the coloured pencil. And I'm going to start by using the Luminance Buff Titanium, which is my usual go-to base colour for warmer fur. This fur has some much lighter areas, which look almost white, so I like to start with the lightest warm pencil I own, which is this Buff Titanium, and then I work my way up to the dark colours. It is important to always follow the direction of the fur as you're shading in, even in these early stages. Next I'm taking the Brown Ochre 10%, which is slightly warmer than the Buff Titanium, and I'm shading into those warm areas of fur, using a light to medium pressure, and continuing to follow the direction of the fur as I work around the eye.
going in with a bit of a dark orange brown. This is the Luminance Brown Ochre. I'm working into the very warmest areas of fur. Starting here in the eyebrow area above the eye. As I'm shading in here, I'm kind of leaving a bit of a gap where those lighter strokes are coming across. And then here I'm going back over the top of those warmer areas. I can see some warm pinky brown tones in certain areas of the fur, so I'm taking the Pablo brownish orange, which is the perfect pencil for this, and I'm working into those areas using a light to medium pressure, creating strokes around the corner here, making sure to change the angle of my pencil as I work around this area. 
If you don't own this pencil, you could always use the Luminance Burnt Sienna 50%, which is quite similar. Now I can also see some hints of olive yellow tones in the fur, so I'm taking the Luminance Olive Brown 10% to shade into those areas using a light to medium pressure, focusing on the warmer parts of the fur. Going in with a more vibrant orange, this is the Polychromos Sanguine, and building up those deeper, warmer areas in the fur. This is the perfect pencil for this, as it's a vibrant orange with a hint of brown, which makes it suitable for fur. I've attached a photo in the corner so you can see the areas where I'll be working into. I'm taking the pressure off here as I add in longer strokes around the bottom. Then I'm going back over those warmer areas to continue building the layers up.
going in with a much deeper ready brown. This is the Luminance Burnt Sienna. I'm adding a touch of colour to the very warmest areas of fur. So here in the eyebrow area and in the corner. And I'm starting to be a bit more precise with my first strokes now, making sure I have a sharp pencil. Then I'm going in with more of a warm brown pencil. This is the Polychromos Burnt Umber. And again I'm working into the warmer areas of fur using a light to medium pressure. Pressing on a little harder in those darker areas. using a much lighter pressure in this area here. I can see that some of the cooler tones around the eye come out into the fur, so I'm using the Luminance Paints Grey 30% to shade out from the grey blue area into the fur, using a light to medium pressure. Then taking the Luminance Olive Brown, I'm just working into those warmer areas.
I want to bring out more of that vibrant yellow brown in the fur, so I'm using the Polychromos Raw Umber, which is a warm yellow brown kind of colour, and I'm creating fur strokes around the warmer areas using a light to medium pressure. Now that we've got a lot of those mid-tones down, I'm going in with the Payne's Grey pencil to add in those darker strokes into the eyebrow area. Creating longer strokes using a medium to heavy pressure, taking the pressure off a little bit as I flip my pencil up. Then I'm also adding darker fur strokes to other areas of the fur. Bringing my pencil up into the lighter area here, but leaving spaces for where the lighter strokes are. using a much lighter pressure as I come up around the top. Using a bit of a heavier pressure for those darker strokes here.
Now I want to add in some mid-tone strokes in the lighter areas of fur. So I'm taking the Luminance Sepia 10%, which is kind of like a light neutral grey brown with a very slight hint of purple, which I can see in the lighter parts of the fur. And I'm just adding longer strokes here using a light to medium pressure. And then I'm adding in strokes to the lighter area at the bottom. Going in with the Polychromos Vista, I'm continuing to add in warm brown strokes to the fur. Taking the Polychromos Paints Grey, I'm continuing to add in darker strokes around the fur. This is the part in the tutorial where it can get quite repetitive as I go back and forth with the same pencils to build those layers of fur up.
Going in again with the Pablo brownish orange, I'm continuing to build up the warmer details, focusing mainly on those corner areas. using a lighter pressure here in the lighter area. Now that we've got a lot of the layers down in the fur, I want to use the White Museum Acroel pencil to bring out some lighter details. So I'm beginning by adding in some lighter strokes just underneath the darker area here in the eyebrow area, creating short, sharp strokes. creating longer strokes as I come up. Adding in some lighter details here right around the eye. I feel like this is creating a bit more dimension. And then here I'm just continuing to add lighter details into the rest of the fur.
Going in with the olive brown 50%, I'm continuing to build up those layers in the warmer areas of fur. Then taking the polychromos cinnamon and building up those warm peachy tones I can see in the fur. Going in with the brown ochre pencil, I'm continuing to build up those orange brown tones in the fur. This area at the bottom has quite a lot of lighter strokes, but I like to build up the warmer underlayers first, and then go over the top with either the slice tool or the white museum acroel pencil. Whilst I'm here, I'm also adding a touch of colour to the eye. I'm struggling to add as many layers over the eye now, so I'm just glazing over this area. And then I'm going over this lighter area using a lighter pressure. Now to add in those lighter hairs at the bottom here, I'm taking the slice tool and I'm bringing the tool over the top of those warmer areas, brushing away the dust as I go along. And I'm overlapping some of these strokes to create a more realistic look.
and then here I brought the slice tool a bit too far down into the eye, so I'm using the Kaput Morton pencil to shade over it. Then going back in with the slice tool, I'm matching in those lighter hairs coming out from the eyebrow area, kind of curving the tool in the direction of the fur. Then I'm going in with the White Museum Acrowell to continue adding in light hairs and softening those strokes we made with the slice tool. Bringing that longer stroke down a bit here. And then here I'm kind of just shading all over this lighter area, softening those strokes we already have down. And we can always go back in afterwards to add some darker strokes in between. And once again I'm going in with the Payne's Grey pencil to continue adding more detail. Taking the pressure off as I work into the lighter fur here.
working in between those lighter strokes here. Adding any extra details within the eye. Using the Polychromos Black, I'm adding in those darker first strokes I can see. I usually like to use the Polychromos for this, rather than the Derwent pencils, as it's a little bit more subtle. Going in with the Luminance Paints Grey 60%, I'm just going over this bottom waterline here as it's looking a little light. And then I'm going over other areas around the eye and continuing to add details into the fur. Using the Luminance Burn Toker 50%, I'm continuing to build up those warmer tones. Taking the Luminance Silver Grey and bringing out some highlights in the blue grey area around the eye. Adding a touch of colour in the reflection and then I'm bringing out some lighter strokes in the fur as some of them look a bit more cool toned. Using the Polychromos Payne's Grey, I'm just refining any details around and within the eye.
And then I'm also adding some extra strokes to the fur. Then going in with the Polychromos Dark Sepia, I'm adding in some darker strokes into the eyebrow area here. Creating longer strokes, flicking my pencil up in the direction of the fur. And then I'm also adding detail to other areas of the fur. Using the Polychromos Burn Tumber, I'm continuing to build up the mid-tone strokes around the fur. Still using the same pencil here, I've just turned my paper around to work from a different angle. And then using a sharp polychromos black, I'm adding in any final darker details around the fur.
And then I'm also going around the edge of the eye and waterline here. Going back over the darkest parts within the eye. And then to finish off, I'm using the White Museum Aquarelle to add in lighter strokes to the fur. And I think I'm going to leave this here. My final thoughts on the paper is that it's a good quality paper, which takes a fair few layers and holds pigment really well. But for me, I would say that it's a little bit too smooth and I prefer a paper with a little bit more tooth. I may try this paper on the other side in future, just to see if there's any difference with it. But overall, I enjoyed working on this surface. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please give this video a like and subscribe. I've also linked my Patreon channel down below if you'd be interested in joining me on there, where I have lots of new tutorials coming out monthly. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.